Hey humans, and welcome to Read To Me, Matt Dunn. I'm Matt Dunn, and it's Casual Friday. So it seems. We're reading Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I've already got the book open and out. I know that we're on chapter 2039, and we're getting to it. It was, a, it was the second week in May in which the three young ladies set out together from Grace Church Street from the town of Line. There's just a fucking line. Let me just hold that up for you. Take a second to judge that, to, to take that in. For the town of fucking blank in Hertfordshire. And as they drew near the appointed in where Mr. Bennett's carriage was to meet them, they quickly perceived, in token of the coachman's punctuality, both Kitty and Lydia looking out of a dining room upstairs. These two girls had been above an hour in the place, happily employed in visiting an opposite milliner, watching the sentinel on guard and dressing a quote-unquote salad and cucumber. I'm getting really mad about this stupid fucking writing. Jane Austen, I'm coming for you. After welcoming their sisters, they triumphantly displayed a table set out of such cold meats as an inn larder usually affords, exclaiming, it is not this nice. It is this, it is not this an agreeable surprise. Is not this nice? Is not this nice? Is it not agreeable surprise? Nah. And we mean to treat you all, added Lydia. But you must lend us the money, for we have just spent ours at the shop out there. Then showing her purchases. Look here, I have bought this bonnet. I do not think it is very pretty. Wait, I do not think it is very pretty. Yeah. But I thought I might as well buy it as not. I shall pull it to pieces as soon as I get home and see if I can make it up any better. And when her sisters abused it was ugly, she added with perfect unconcern. Oh, but there were two or three much uglier in the shop. And when I have bought some prettier colored satin to trim it with fresh, I think it will be very tolerable. Besides, it will not much signify what one wears this summer after the blank fucking shire have left Meryton and they are going in a fortnight. Whatever the fuck that means. Are they indeed? Whatever the fuck that means, cried Elizabeth, with the greatest satisfaction. They are going to be encamped near Brighton. And I do so want Papa to take us all there for the summer. It would be such a delicious scheme, and I dare say I would hardly cost anything at all. Mama would like to go too, of all things. Only think what a miserable summer else we shall have. Yes, thought Elizabeth. That would be a delightful scheme indeed, and completely do for us at once. Good heaven! Brighton, and a whole campful of soldiers to us, who have been overset already by one poor regiment of militia, ha who ha ha in the monthly balls of Meryton. Now I have got some news for you, said Lydia, as they sat down at the table. What do you think? It is an excellent news, cap capital news, and about a certain person that we all like. Jane and Elizabeth looked at each other, and the waiter was told that he need not stay. Lydia laughed and said, Hee 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 hee! that is that is just like your formality and discretion. You thought the waiter must not hear as if he cared. I dare say, he often hears worse things said than I am going to say. But he is such an ugly fellow, I am glad he is gone. I never saw such a long chin in my life. Well, but now for my news, it is about dear Wickham. Too good for the waiter is not, is it not, is not it? This is no danger of Wickham's marrying Mary King. There's for you. She has gone down to her uncle at Liverpool, gone to stay. Wickham is safe. 
And Mary King is safe, added Elizabeth, safe from a connection in prudence as to fortune. Uh, okay. She is, she is a great fool for going away if she liked him. But I hope there is no strong attachment on either side, said Jane. I am sure there is not in his. I will answer for it. He never cared three straws about her. Who could about such a nasty little freckled thing? Elizabeth was shocked to think that, however incapable of such coarseness of expression herself, the coarseness of the sentiment was a little other than her own breast had formerly b harbored and fancied liberal. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You know what I mean? These words, are they fantastic or what? Fucking fantastic. I disagree. Fuck this shit. As soon as all had ate and the elder ones paid, the carriage was ordered and after some contrivance, the whole party with all their fucking boxes, work bags, parcels, and the stupid fucking unwelcome addition of Kitty's and Lydia's purchases were seated in it. Herba! How nicely we are crammed in, cried Lydia. I am glad I bought my bonnet. If it is only for the fun of having an, another band box. Well, now let us quite be comfortable and snug and talk and laugh all the way home. And in the first place, let us hear what happened to you all since you went away. Have you seen any other pleasant men? Have you had any flirting? Was it in great hopes that one of you would co-get a husband before you came back? Jane will be quite an old maid soon. I declare she is almost... Three and twenty. Lord, how ashamed I should be of not being married before three and twenty. I would kick that little bitch in the teeth. Fuck you. I'm not an old maid. My Aunt Phillips wants you to get to husbands, you think. You can think. Can You can't. Can't think. Says she, she says Lizzie had better have taken Mr. Collins, but I do not think there will be have been any fun in it. Lord. How I should like to be married before any of you. And then I would chaperone you about to all the balls. Dear me, we had such a good piece of fun the other day at Colonel Forster's. Kitty and me were to spend the day there. And Mrs. Forster promised to have a little dance in the evening. Mm. By the by, uh, Mrs. Forster and me are such friends. And so she asked the two Harrington's to come, but Harriet was ill, and so Penn was forced to come by herself, and then what do you think we did? Oh, we slapped each other in the face until my nose bled. Mm, just kidding. We dressed up Chamberlain in women's clothes on purpose to pass for a lady. Only think, what fun. I'm assuming it's a dog. Not a soul knew of it but Colonel and Mrs. Forrester and Kitty and me, except my aunt, for we were forced to borrow one of her gowns, and you cannot imagine how well he looked. When Denny and Wickham and Pratt and two or three more of the men came in, they did not know him at least. Lord, how I laughed, and so did Mrs. Forrester. I thought I should have died, and that made the men suspect something, and then they soon found out what was the matter. Yo, someone sh better shut this fucking bitch up because I'm getting sick and tired of this little brat. She's so not entertaining. With such kind of histories of their parties and good jokes did Lydia, assisted by Kitty's hints and additions, endeavor to amuse her companions all the way to Longbourn. Elizabeth listened as little as she could, but there was no escaping the frequent mention of Wickham's name. Their reception at home was most kind. Mrs. Bennet rejoiced to see Jane in undiminished beauty. And more than once during dinner did Mr. Bennet say voluntarily to Elizabeth, I am glad you are come back, Lizzie. You're the only kid I like here. That one's a piece of shit. That one's annoying. That one's ugly. That one's not getting married ever. And that one, is that even our kid? Who's that? What? What's that? What's that one? A little bonnet Joe? I don't know. Okay. Elizabeth, though. You're the best one. Their party in the dining room was large, for almost all the Lucases came to meet Maria and hear the news. And various 
were the subjects which occupied them. Lady Lucas was inquiring of Maria across the table after the welfare and poultry of their eldest daughter. Mrs. Bennet was doubly engaged on one hand collecting uh, an account of the present fashions from Jane, who sat some way below her and on the other retailing them all the younger Miss Lucas's and Lydia, in a voice rather louder than any other person's, was emunating the various pleasures of the morning to anybody who would hear her. Oh, Mary! said she, I wish you had gone with us, for we had such fun. As we went along, Kitty and me drew up the blinds and pretending there was nobody in the coach, and I should have gone so all the way if Kitty had not been sick. And when we got to George, I do think we behaved very handsomely, for we treated the other three with the nicest cold luncheon in the world. And if you would have gone, we would have treated you too." And then, when we came away, it was such fun. I thought we never should have got it in the coach. I was ready to die of laughter. Why? That's so... F ah, and then we were so merry all the way home. <laughs> we talked and laughed so loud that anybody might have heard us ten miles off. I would have been annoyed. I'd have been like, you can shut the fuck up now. Stop it. You want to laugh? Laugh about... The people out there. Look at all those homeless people. Are you laughing at that? People are dying every day and you're laughing in here in this fucking carriage? People are lonely. People have nothing. People are homeless. You, you're you just fucking frivolously... Ha ha ha! Oh my god, I do not like these children. To this, Mary very gratefully replied, Far be it from me, my dear sister, to depreciate such pleasures. They would doubtless be congenial with the genitality of a female mind, but I confess they would have no charms for me. I should indefinitely prefer a book, but if this answer Lydia heard not a word, she seldom listened to anybody for more than half a minute and never attended to Mary at all. Okay, Lydia, you're the piece of shit. Is that what that is? Lydia, get checked. Go sit in a corner. In the afternoon, Lydia was urgent with the rest of the girls to walk to Maryton to see how everybody went on. But Elizabeth steadily opposed the scheme. It should not be said that the Miss Bennets could not be at home half a day before they were in pursuit of the officers. There was another reason, too, for her opposition. She dreaded seeing Wickham again and was resolved to avoid it as long as possible. The comfort to her of the regiment's approaching removal was indeed beyond expression. In a fortnight they were to go, and once gone, she hoped there could be nothing more to plague her in his account. She had not been many hours at home before she found that Brighton's scheme, of which Lydia had been given them a hint at the end, was under frequent discussion between her parents. Elizabeth saw directly that her father had not the smallest intention of yielding, but his answers were at the same time so vague and equivocal that her mother, though often disheartened, had never yet despaired of succeeding at last. That was... Chapter 39. Oof. 39, 39. Gonna read chapter 40 next. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be grand. It's gonna do a little dip and a handstand. Her. You know, I really don't understand why they wrote the way they did back then oh my god it's really irking me man it's irking the fuck out of me i don't understand it i feel stupid it makes me feel stupid and when something makes you feel uh, uh, stupid it makes you angry because ignorance fuels fear right yoda said that yoda said you cannot have your ice cream before supper. Oh, wait. Yoda talks backwards, so he basically said, You have ice cream before supper, no? <sighs> Fucking Lydia. I swear to God, Lydia's on my shit list. 
If I got one more fucking chapter to listen to Lydia, I can't. I can't. I I just I I won't I won't be able to handle it. Anyway, if you like what you see here, please check out some more videos. Uh, write a comment down below. Let me know what you think. Hit the thumbs up button if you like it. Uh, subscribe to check out some more videos and to be updated with uh, new videos every day. And if you want to reach out to me, my email is in the about section in the description down below. That is uh, talk to Matt Dunn at gmail.com. Talk, the number two, Matt Dunn. I'd like to hear from you. See what you got to say, whatever. You're great. You're all great. I'll see you tomorrow. And please remember to be weird.